From Hollywood, California, we bring you Murder on the Oregon Express. Starring Buddy Ebsen as Barnaby Jones. Seems to me that death is simply nature's way of telling you to slow down. <laughs> Special guest star, Peter Falk as Columbo. You happen to see a red oriental book written by old... Oh, the name's on the tip of my... Tip of my... Not the tip of my... No, the tip of my... The, oh, tongue. Yeah, tongue. Might she tongue? Yes. <laughs> Pardon me, miss. But if you didn't see it, how do you know who wrote it? I'm going to hold you. For questioning? Not necessarily. <laughs> also starring David McKillum as the Invisible Man. Oh. <laughs> Pick that up. Extra special cold guest star, Raymond Burr as Ironside. Hey there, Sergeant. Yeah. You can get me a box of matches. I say, uh, Mark, do you, do you have any lighter parts? Oh, Chief, I'm the same color all over. Just a minute. Uh, my name is Marshall McLeod, and I'm here to tell you this compartment is reserved. You ain't supposed to be here. Uh, would you mind turning that blame thing off? Can't hear myself think with that noise going on over the house. I say, would you mind turning that noise off? I can't. Mind if I join your cannon? I don't to be my guest. Monsieur Hercule Poirot here was just saying that there's no such thing as the perfect crime. <laughs> it is quite true. Yeah, I'll go along with that. Well, I remember one time in New York, we had a fellow rob a bank, didn't leave no fingerprints nor nothing. He got clean away with over half a million dollars in used notes. On the way to the getaway car, he got mugged. Well, uh, we all make mistakes. We sure do. Well, I remember one time I followed a platinum blonde in a long black gown for four blocks before I found out it was a high court judge. <laughs> the case comes up next Friday. We in Paris, France, Europe also have a lot of vice and cream. Stealing, robbery, buglery, ship lofting, and pockpicketing. Uh, Choplifting and pickpocketing. <laughs> Not to mention, man's laughter. Man's laughter? I said not to mention man's laughter. <laughs> Monsieur Poirot, I must admit, I find your conversation completely resistible. But unfortunately, my stomach is beginning to ask if my throat is cut. <laughs> so if you'll excuse me, I'll just amble along to the dining car. Oh. <laughs> oh. Pardon me, Sergeant Pepper. Oh, dear. Oh, God. I'm sorry about it. I haven't been so embarrassed since I was with the President's daughter, <laughs> examining her magnificent pair of pistols. Pistols! <laughs> the speaker ran across the White House lawn. Oh, they had to convene a special size court for him and <laughs> the thing she said about him. What a size? <laughs> I don't think she said that, though. I wouldn't scare her. <laughs> so I really only wanted a bite, you know. Looks like I'm either going to starve to death or die of ecstasy. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about this. I hope you won't hold it against That's me. That's exactly what I am doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Okay, then. <laughs> the pressure was all mine. <laughs> don't you believe it? <laughs> Remember my old sheriff? He used to say shoot first and ask questions afterwards. Well, you didn't get many answers that way. <laughs> McLeod, do you realize that while you've been sitting there joy, the man has been viciously attacked? <laughs>
been shot 14 times, stabbed 17 times! <laughs> Did he have any enemies? Of course! <laughs> he... he had. <laughs> the driver wouldn't keep speeding up and slowing down all the time. Well, McLeod, you're the only one on duty, officially. Now you just leave everything to me. Don't pull that chair! with it, McLeod. Well, all right, I'm going. Say, <laughs> either of you two fellas know anything about a murder? <laughs> Come on, sweetheart. I'm on vacation, do you mind? Hey, you don't think he had anything to do with it, do you? Hey, Meathead, tell him what's written on the barrel of your gun. It says, uh, uh, <laughs> hold by the other end. <laughs> what I tell you? Who loves you, baby? You're beautiful. McLeod, why don't you check who went near the victim's compartment? Well, I know who went up that way. I'm gonna shame him into confessing, like we did back in Little Creek. I'll tell him I know everything. That's why I'm going to tell him. You, uh, you want to see me, McLeod? Cannon, I know everything. You know everything? Yes, Cannon, everything. Well, McLeod, I mean, see it my way. I mean, you were away, and your wife was lonely. I was lonely, and oh, we were sexually attracted to each other because she's a very attractive woman. She's <laughs> big. God, she's big. I mean, then, and I have to, but you. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I couldn't help it. You understand? <laughs> well, don't that beat all. You wanted to see me, Marshal? Sergeant Pepper, I know everything. Everything? Yes, Sergeant Pepper, I know everything. Oh, sir. Sir, I'm not really immoral. It's just that I can't say no to a man in uniform. <laughs> I mean, I'm not an maniac. At least I don't think I am. It's just that smoking makes me feel sexy. I mean, every time I have a cigarette, I just want to grab the nearest man and tear all my clothes now, off. Now, don't you worry about things. All right, dear Sergeant Pepper, you go to your compartment, sit down, and I'll be along half a in a minute. In the meantime, I can smoke that. <laughs> Did. <laughs> but I sure as hell am going to. <laughs> you want to see me, McLeod? Barnaby Jones, I know everything. Everything? You know everything? Yes, old timer, I know everything. My son! <laughs> my son! My little son! Oh, I'll keep them. <laughs> This has been a Quinn Martin, Barton, Harton, Larton, and Fargo production.